Shalom, I'm Ezra from Jewish Voice. This is day five of the war in Israel. It's Wednesday, uh, the 11th of October, and I'm sitting here in one of the several prayer and intercession spaces we have at our headquarters in Jewish Voice. Uh, it's such an encouragement to see our prayer partners coming in and out uh, day after day, and I want to just encourage you at home, if you're watching the news, if you're reading the headlines saying, what on earth do I do? Prayer is the most important thing you can do right now. I just want to say again, and we're going to keep saying here at Jewish Voice, there's a battle happening in the natural. Israel is at war against radical Islamist terrorist enemies who are seeking to infiltrate the borders of Israel and annihilate the Jewish people. They've made that very clear in their own uh, political statements and campaigns here. But more than a natural war, it's a spiritual battle. There is actually a flood of evil, of darkness in spiritual places happening. We've seen it in Bible times throughout history, and I'm going to say boldly that we're seeing it right now. The enemy hates the Jewish people. He hates anyone who calls upon the name of the Lord, but he understands that the Jewish people will welcome back the Messiah, Jesus, Yeshua, to rule and reign from Jerusalem. And because of that, he hates the Jewish people, he hates the land of Israel, and he especially hates the city of Jerusalem. That, brothers and sisters, is part of why we're called and exhorted, and I want to exhort you right now to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And as you know, if you're watching uh, the news, which I'm sure you are, this is now no longer a single front battle on the border of, of the Gaza Strip with the main uh, part of the land of Israel. This is now a three-front battle. Just this morning, we're getting reports from our friends who live in the north of Israel who have been living in relative quiet and receiving refugee families displaced from their homes in southern Israel. Now, those homes are on lockdown because just a few hours ago, there was this drone attack uh, of possibly weaponized drones, we don't have the details, from Hezbollah, who's now joining the fight against Israel along with Hamas and coming from the northern border uh, with Israel and Lebanon, attempting to, again, same thing, attack innocent Israeli towns, annihilate the Jewish people, and infiltrate the borders of Israel. Fortunately, from what we hear, Israel has pushed back that first wave, but Hezbollah from Lebanon is now involved. And what's more, there's mortars being fired from Syria into the Golan Heights. So make no mistake, this is a three-front war. And then to top this all off, check me if you don't believe me, because it seems unbelievable, but it's happening. Hamas and a number of key leaders in the Arab and Palestinian world, and I want to say they don't represent all of the Arab or Muslim peoples on earth. They represent a radicalized, embittered portion of that community. They've just now declared that this coming Friday, October 13th, is a day to mobilize the Arab and Palestinian world. And the word that was used is to flood towards the Al-Aqsa Mosque in Jerusalem, which along with being the holiest site in Judaism, the Temple Mount, Al-Aqsa Mosque is the third holiest site in all of Islam. That's why the city of Jerusalem is so vehemently fought for in every generation. So why am I telling you this? Not to scare us, but to say, make no mistake, this is a spiritual battle. This is radical Islam mask off, make no mistake what it is. And the appeal here to the Muslim world is overcome Israeli forces on Friday. It's in the language of the declaration. Check it out online if you don't believe me. And to literally flood Israel from every side with a push to ultimately conquer Jerusalem, the Temple Mount, the Al-Aqsa Mosque, back into Muslim hands away from the Jewish hands that conquered it in, mili in miraculous military victory in 1967. So this really is, according to the Muslim world's own declaration, at least the radical Islamic leaders' world, this is a holy war. This is a religious battle, which means it's a spiritual battle. What do we do in spiritual battles? We pray prayers and we put on spiritual armor. We take up the spiritual weapons of our warfare. I'm, I'm thinking almost nonstop, and I want to invite you to do this with me and to pray this, Isaiah 59, 19. And you know this passage. It says, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of Adonai, the spirit of the Lord, will lift up a standard against 
the enemy. And we've quoted this. I know you've quoted it. I've quoted it for circumstances and challenges or warfare in our own lives. But the context of this here, if we look a few verses earlier, is that the Lord saw that there was no man and he wondered that there was no intercessor. Therefore, his own arm brought salvation for him and his own righteousness it sustained him. This is talking about the Lord who is mighty in battle, actually going into battle. Isaiah saw a day in the future when the Lord would take vengeance on the nations that had taken vengeance on Israel, on his people, and he would himself go into battle. And then it finishes with that passage, so shall they fear, so shall the enemies of the Lord fear him. They'll feel, fear the name of the Lord from the west. This is verse 19. And they'll fear his glory from the rising of the sun. That's talking about the places east of Israel. And then it finishes, because when the enemy comes in like a flood, Friday the 13th, a day for the Arab world to, to arise and to flood Israel and Jerusalem. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard against him. So I want to invite you, stay steadfast in prayer. Don't be overwhelmed with evil, like the scriptures tell us. Overcome evil with good. The, the good that you can do right now is praying for the peace of Jerusalem, standing boldly with the Jewish people and with the land of Israel for their right to exist, right to exist in their very survival right now, and praying prayers that are powerful and effective, that the Lord would drive back the enemies of Israel and the Jewish people on every side, and that as there's a worldwide call to co literally come in like a flood, this Friday, that the Lord would raise up a standard. We're asking him to do it. We're holding the Lord to his promises to do it. And we're expecting to see a miraculous breakthrough this Friday, not just for the IDF, but for the Jewish people at large and all those who stand with them and breakthrough in spiritual places. So we're going to keep you updated as we hear more, not only from the headlines, but from our friends and ministry partners on the ground. Stay steadfast in prayer, brothers and sisters. We'll keep you updated as we know more. Thank you.